All right, welcome to another game review. Today I'm going to review Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is something I played on stream, so I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna edit too much. We're just gonna record our thoughts here and talk about this game. Uh, this is a game that came out on the GameCube back in 2005. I'm pretty sure is when it came out. At least that's what I put on my stream. So I hope that was okay. Uh, this is a Pokemon uh, spin-off in, set in the Generation 3 era, I believe. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is Generation 3. So this is when uh, Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and eventually Emerald uh, were out and about on the Game Boy Advance. And uh, during this time, the Pokemon Company also made two spin-off games for the GameCube. There are two full-blown... RPGs set in the Pokemon universe, which is pretty interesting. Pokemon Coliseum and then the sequel, Pokemon XD. This is XD. I didn't play Coliseum yet and I kind of am curious about it. Uh, because this is a sequel, I think it takes place about two or maybe five years after the events of that first game. Even though I didn't play it, there's plenty of callbacks in the story. Uh, lots of moments are referencing Team Cypher and uh, the main bad guys of this game and more but just a premise preface wow uh preface the premise of this game uh the game opens up with a pretty cool intro of a ship on the ocean just minding its own biz own business and it kind of gets kidnapped or uh stolen by a giant black lugia uh this is actually pretty cool and it's one of the most uh interesting points about this game is this shadow lugia it's on the cover it's one of the biggest talking points of the game if you're uh if you have any fond memories of it it is these shadow pokemon and especially shadow lugia because it is so cool looking with its reverse color scheme and giant red eyes uh but that's also one of the down points of this game i have to say is the story it's uh, it's kind of a very ineffectual story because Shadow Lugia is kind of the big issue in the opening cinematic and then it's nothing. <laughs> it gets mentioned by its code name a few times like oh man XD001 is I think is what it's called. Oh it's gonna change the world and you literally do not see it ever uh, it never does anything special it never attacks anyone else they don't sick it on anything it doesn't steal any like crazy cargo ships or like transport things nothing like that it literally never appears until the very end of the game where it gets set on you and you can just toss a master ball at it and catch it like i did uh so yeah the story as as it is set up is pretty boring and well, not boring, it's just not uh, dealt with effectively. But what is done well in this story is kind of the stakes that Team Cypher sets up in this world. Uh, like I said, this game takes place several years after the previous game. And even though I didn't play it, a lot of the implications of those events are uh, directly related to the events of this game. Because lots of people think Team Cypher is gone, but really they're back and they're causing all kinds of trouble by making shadow Pokemon. Shadow Pokemon are Pokemon whose hearts have been closed off and they're uh, just more aggressive and they're more vicious apparently and all those sorts of things. Uh, at the same time, they're still under control by trainers, specifically Team Cypher trainers who are doling out shadow Pokemon to their minions and some other people around the world, whether they know it or not. Uh, as a concept, this is pretty interesting because it also has gameplay implications, but uh, once again, the whole Shadow Pokemon uh, story arc isn't isn't really a big effectual thing in the story. But what is are some of the things that Team Cypher does? Like in the very opening of the game, they kidnap your professor. As every Pokemon game starts off, there's a professor and they are your friend or acquaintance and you kind of get your main mission from them of like running around the Pokemon world doing various things like catching Pokemon, doing research. In this game, our professor gets kidnapped right away. And the professor is kind of like a family friend. We live in the same lab with the professor, with our parent and our sister. So he's like a, a very close family friend and we have to go get him. I really like this story element because it sets up a really intimate story right from the jump. And I think that's really cool and interesting. Something that Pokemon just doesn't do. 
but once you rescue the professor those kind of links just kind of fade off more and more and more as you play through the game of course we're basically uncovering team cypher's plans as they go around the world and as a group compared to some of the more recent uh rival or maybe enemy groups team cypher is a pretty standout one in my opinion uh, they take over a whole town and replace all the citizens of the town and they all disguise themselves as the citizens of the town which is pretty cool in my opinion uh, there's another one where they they basically take over a uh oh, geez what is it i don't even remember <laughs> Uh, they they do a lot in this game. They do a lot of varied things. They're not like Team Rocket where they're just stealing Pokemon or they're not like, uh, geez, what was, I don't know, the group uh, from Generation 4 where they're just trying to, or maybe Generation 5, but they're trying to liberate Pokemon from their Pokeballs and stuff like that. But uh, on the surface, Team Cypher is pretty interesting just because they actually do have a variety of plans. And I think that's what makes team cypher a pretty interesting rival group or enemy group to go up against that said it does kind of peter out pretty quickly uh, especially at the end of the game you kind of the game kind of almost sets up like it has a little bit more to say for team cypher and then it just kind of doesn't so that's that's a downside to it uh, when i finished the game there was like the reveal that one of the bodyguards for the main villain is like his son and like it just comes out of nowhere <laughs> and then his other right hand man is just like the super evil guys like don't be weak we should just blow up the base destroy the kid destroy all the pokemon and all the evidence and then they're just like no we shouldn't do that we should have some morals and then like there's like a very quick redemption arc for the main villain who doesn't reveal reveal themselves until the very end but yeah it's it's fine yeah it's fine e it's Pokemon, you don't really expect that much from the story. That said, I do think it, it gave you enough compelling reasons to go from town to town to area to area. Uh, where I do have another point of praise, I'll just I'll keep it positive, I'll, or I'll try to, is the game's animations and graphics. I actually think this game looks pretty nice, even for a GameCube game. I'm playing this on the Dolphin emulator, and I all I did was upscale the graphics just a very tiny bit. I think I bumped it to 720p or so. And I think this game looks great. Uh, a lot of the Pokemon animations are really nice. And I also thought some of the move animations were pretty good too. Uh, I don't think this game had a Colosseum or Stadium like game. Uh, I mean, there is a Colosseum on this. <laughs> it is the prequel. Uh, but there's no Stadium like game in this generation. So I think this was like the stand in for that. Instead of giving you a bunch of mini games, they gave us this big RPG adventure. Uh, that said, one of my biggest, or my 100% biggest complaint with this game is it is a slog. Uh, the battle animations in particular are what make this game such a slog. It is a very, very, very slow game. Uh, the, and it's mainly because the battle animations in this game are super, super slow. Lots of the Pokemon have to do their like cute little movement, and then they have to do their move. And then they have the hit reaction, and boy oh boy is it slow <laughs> it is very slow and even playing on the emulator using the fast forward function i was really having my mind blown several times just looking at how much time it was taking me to get through some of the dungeons and some of the or like some of the the areas that you just had to battle through for story purposes and then looking at just boy just how <laughs> how long-winded this game is it, it it's just it's just such a problem with it like i said i even use the fast forward function quite a lot through this game and i would look over at the clock and be like whoa it's been like two hours and i still haven't cleared this cypher facility <laughs> that's only two floors uh, and that's the other problem with this game is that it is filled to the brim with trainer battles there are essentially no wild pokemon encounters but there kind of are and i'll touch on that later there are basically only trainer battles in this and they are all double battles aside from like one tutorial battle in the opening it's insane that this is a double battle game with these animations it just makes everything really long but it also makes the battles quite interesting because you're juggling two different pokemon with two different weaknesses and advantages and all that kind of stuff granted if you're if you know anything about pokemon you can navigate this game pretty easily but if you're trying to 
run through the story trying to catch all the shadow Pokemon as they come up. It is not easy. This game is actually quite difficult and I found myself getting pretty frustrated at the end, but only at the end. That's when it really started trying, really started catching up with me. But this game is quite good. It's quite, quite difficult if you kind of, if you kind of just play it as it's intended and not really uh, crit path it too much. But I, I enjoyed it myself. And like I said, there's not many wild encounters, mostly just uh, trainer battles. But when the wild encounters do show up, uh, they are done in a very specific way with a very limited pool of Pokemon. And you basically have to lay out uh, Pokemon snacks and then after a certain time or certain amount of steps, a Pokemon will randomly appear. And you'll get like a small choice of Pokemon that can appear in certain locations. It's okay. It kind of feels almost tacked on uh there is some side quests attached to it and it can be a way to get those extra pokemon that you miss later in the game but the main way you get pokemon in this is by catching shadow pokemon like i said these are pokemon that other trainers will have so you'll have they will show up and in certain battles and that's how you get that specific pokemon you catch it in that battle and a really cool thing that they do, which is pretty nice, is that if you miss that Pokemon, there's an NPC who will run around in the world later in the game, and he will have uh, whatever Pokemon you missed, basically, and will keep reappearing until you're able to catch all of the Shadow Pokemon. It's pretty nice, but the Shadow Pokemon themselves can be quite tough to deal with because they do super effective damage to every normal Pokemon, which is wild. <laughs> But for the significant majority of the game, they don't do too much damage. Uh, until you get near the end where they start getting moves like Shadow Rave, where they hit both Pokemon at the same time. And once again, it'll do super effective damage no matter what the type is. And then they get things like uh, Double Confuse, where they can confuse both of your Pokemon. They can set up like uh, an Acid Rain almost. They just get a little ridiculous near the end of the game, and there's even one that has like a move that can basically KO you in one hit, and it only makes them go down to 50% damage. It is super annoying. Thankfully, emulators have save states, so I was able to navigate it without too much trouble, but at the same time, it's pretty annoying. Also, the XP curve in this game is quite low. Uh, granted, the last battle in this game is like level 50 Pokemon, so... Uh, it, it tries to keep you around the, the same pace as the, the enemies that you'll be battling, but yeah, it, it, I especially near the end, I, there were some battles that just kind of were one-shotting me out of nowhere, and it's obviously due to the, my choices in Pokemon, because I wanted to use Sharpedo, because I like Sharpedo, and Sharpedo takes a ton of damage because it has no defense, <laughs> but uh, still, it... it it's it put up more of a challenge than I thought it would but and one last thing I want to touch on is or the next thing I want to touch on is how you cleanse your Pokemon how you purify them from shadow form uh, basically what you do is you have to use them in battle or set them up in a purification machine once you get a little bit past the first major uh, dungeon area uh, Basically, this is a meter that will go down as you fight with your Pokemon or as you uh, use incense on them, or uh, sense, I should say. And as you do that, the Pokemon's uh, shadow meter will go down, and as it goes down, they will be able to be purified, and then they will turn into their normal Pokemon's forms, and then you can level them up, they can learn normal moves. Once again, they lose their shadow moves, but they learn all their basic normal stuff. Uh, the purification machine is a pretty interesting thing because the more Pokemon you have that are uh, purified, the faster you can purify uh, other Pokemon. How it works is you get to basically set up a ring of four Pokemon and then you can set your shadow Pokemon in the middle. And how you set up the ring of Pokemon determines how quickly your Pokemon will be purified. Uh, basically how you do it is you set them up in a ring of which what they are weak or strong against so if you put like a zubat in your purification ring you need to put like say a graveler that can be super effective damage against a zubat and because they're a zubat you can put 
jeez, uh, uh, what is so you can put like a bug type because bl uh, Zubat is a flying type, so on and so forth. And if you make up the perfect ring of weaknesses and strengths, then you get a full meter of purification and it basically just purifies at the highest efficiency. It's pretty interesting and it takes some time to get going, but once it gets going, you can actually uh, purify, I think, up to nine Shadow Pokemon at a time. So it's an, it's an interesting mechanic and system, but it's uh, a little long-winded and uh, definitely definitely took its toll on me, I will say. There were some times where I was like, man, I just want to use this Pokemon, but I have to wait, I have to run around, run in circles a bit. Thankfully, though, I will say it doesn't take too long to purify a Pokemon. That is my biggest highlight of that whole system. While it is a very long-winded system and menu juggling, uh, it doesn't take too long for most Pokemon to get purified, though it does depend on the Pokemon. Some Pokemon take uh, significantly longer to purify. Uh, but yeah, that is basically it. My general thoughts on Pokemon XD Gale of, of Darkness is that it is a good RPG for the time, but it's not a great one now. <laughs> uh, by, by the time I got to the end of this game, I was pretty burnt out on it. it well, not the game itself, but definitely that last dungeon. The last dungeon of this game is like five hours long. There are so many trainer battles. That, and once again, they're all double battles. It just takes a very long time. But I would I would love to see more projects like this. This is Pokemon making a more standardized RPG adventure, not uh, catch them all, not become champion, nothing like that. It is, this is the story, go through the story. Like you're not gonna catch every Pokemon in creation at this point. We have some pretty cool stuff here. You can go through it. I really think it's unique and interesting, even if it's not the best uh, Pokemon game, or definitely not the best Pokemon story or most interesting world, because it is quite a small, condensed world with only a handful yes, of towns. Fighting. I think it's interesting, and I think for more hardcore Pokemon fans or just people who missed this game as a kid, or maybe just want to revisit it, it's a pretty interesting one, and you can, I think you can have a good time with it if you if you pace it out a little bit better than I did, I just kind of tried to rush through the end, and I think that's why I got frustrated with the ending, because the ending is super long. <laughs> that last dungeon is like five hours long, and that was with fast forwarding, so boy oh boy, it, it it's a rough one. But at the same time, I think this game is worth playing, and I think it's a pretty interesting and unique uh, side adventure to the Pokemon franchise, but... It is a GameCube game, so uh, this is definitely one of those games that's for the people who either remember it or have uh, fond remembrance of it but never played it like I did. Uh, this is a game I saw on the shelf as a kid and being being a kid who skipped Generation 3 as a Pokemon fan from the original days, I, I, this was something that interested me but uh, I never got to. So, uh, Is it worth playing in 2023? Eh. Not really. <laughs> it's unique enough that I would say for hardcore Pokemon fans, it's worth playing. But for everyone else, I don't, I don't think you need to go out of your way, especially to buy a copy of this game. Uh, if you just want to run through it on the emulator, I think that is the best option for you. But yeah, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, interesting game, but not a great one. I, I personally love classic setup style RPGs just kind of play through the story and I would love a more uh, linear you're not going to catch them all just play through this narrative focused game from Pokemon I think that would be great I don't think this game holds up all that well and I think that's my biggest point here but it's an interesting fun Pokemon adventure with a pretty hardcore <laughs> curb to it and the last thing I want to mention is how much post-game there is here. There's tons of side quests, there's tons of optional battles, uh, optional stadiums, uh, challenges, Pokemon to find, Pokemon to trade to get other things. Uh, there's a, a battle system here where I think you need 100 wins and then you can get like the Generation 2 starters or something like that. There's mini games, like this is a pretty stacked game. I think you can put a lot of hours into it. If you want to 100% this game, this is a <laughs> this is a challenge to 100%, that's for sure. Uh, but I think 
like geez how old would i have been like back in 2005 i think like 14 year old me would have loved this game if i was like hardcore into pokemon at the time i, I don't think i was but i i would have loved this game back in the day it's it's pretty pretty jam-packed and pretty stuffed once you finish the story there's plenty to still do and all those extra things to 100 percent you can even trade in pokemon from the game boy advance games if you've got that lying around but yeah, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness is like a solid 7, I, I almost want to say 6.5 out of 10, but I think it's a solid 7 out of 10. I, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, some of my gripes didn't show up until the very end of the game, so I don't think it's fair to uh, take, take away the score too much, but it's a pretty long-winded but pretty fun or interesting game up to a certain point, and then it just kind of overstays its welcome a little bit. But yeah, that is my thoughts on Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness with no writing, no nothing but like a few hours of sleep <laughs> after finishing it. So th those are my thoughts. Please like, sub, uh, let me know down below what you thought of this game. Uh, leave a like, leave a sub, tell a friend, uh, spread the word. Do I just not see what makes this game a 10 out of 10? Is the 7 out of 10 like fair? Uh, let me know. Anyway. I hope to see you again for the next game. Uh, I'm not sure what my next retro month game is going to be, but I, yeah, I'm still not ready to travel back into the land of 2023's long-winded games after Final Fantasy. So, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Wow, this took longer than I thought. I thought this would be like a five-minute video, and it's like 20 minutes. That always happens. Anyway, good night. Good game. I hope to see you again next time.